everyone and welcome back. Our next guest and speaker is the founder and CEO of Saxo Bank. With his extensive knowledge and experience, we are really looking forward to hearing about open banking as fuel for partnerships and sustainable investments. Hi Kim, we're super happy to have you with us. Thank you so much. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, I don't know if the noise is, is uh, working okay here, uh, but uh, obviously being here in the grey and the rainy uh, Copenhagen is not exactly the same as being in Singapore. And uh, we have a very nice office in Singapore, and we've, we've obviously been attending uh, the Singapore FinTech uh, Festival many times. And I think it's actually quite uh, compelling that uh, in 2016, uh, we were actually presenting and launching uh, our open API, open API and thereby open banking uh, in, in uh, under the Singapore FinTech Festival. Now, uh, we are uh, close to five years uh, later, um, and uh, I think a lot of stuff has happened in the world today. Uh, I, I'm not going to spend any time on Corona for obvious reasons, because I think that's uh, more than well covered across uh, the board. But um, I think partnerships and sustainable investments and, and how we as uh, fintech companies can, can actually support and assist that uh, progress is, is very, very, very important to us. So um, uh, first of all, I think it's very important for everyone to understand that uh, Saxo's vision is to enable people to fulfill their financial aspirations and make an impact. And um, uh, this is something obviously we've, we've been thinking a lot about what, what uh, how can you, in a in really short and brief way, explain what it's what it's all about? And um, I think it's fair to say that that uh, Saxo Bank is probably one of the most uh, technologically technologically advanced uh, fintechs out there. Not that others are not, because I think uh, you know we we see a lot of uh, compelling solutions there. But Saxo realistically was a fintech even uh, before the the term was invented. Uh, I started the business now more than 28 years ago, and we have always had a, a, a significant focus on developing technology, which I, I, I'm coming back to. But also, we are really catering for uh, uh, global capital markets, uh, both for traders, investors, and, and, and partners, uh, which, which I'm, I'm again going to uh, dig a little bit deep into. But uh, using the right kind of technology uh, is, is very critical, and being able to do that on a global level being locally relevant, being able to trade or invest in any micro cycle in the economy is, is a very, very compelling proposition, but it's also quite difficult to do. Um, much, uh, or I would say, uh, nicely more than half of our 20, uh, 150 employees are uh, working in technology and will uh, continuously developing better solutions for our clients. And in the end, uh, our main mission is really that, that we want to make sure that people, of course, have the best chances of uh, navigating their financial uh, uh, future, but also thereby fulfilling their financial aspirations. But at the same time, and this is very important for the whole uh, ESG agenda, uh, uh, really to make an impact. Because we don't believe that that has uh, been possible to the extent it is now historically. And we don't believe that that is how traditional businesses and, and, and banks and brokers have, have basically uh, conducted their business and, and prepared their business model. So um, understanding that uh, uh, what is it that will allow you to uh, uh, really come up with the best possible solutions for the clients, I think that, that incentive structures uh, are very, very critical. We are always talking about partnership in Saxo Bank. We are always talking about win-win. Uh, and uh, that also means that we have to be able to operate under certain virtues, certain uh, guidelines, but also we have to make sure that our business model do not pose a potential conflict of interest with our clients and partners. And therefore, our business model, uh, which has remained the same actually more or less since we, we, we started uh, launching our first platform, which was in uh, April 1998, has remained the same. And that means we've debunked the value chain so uh, uh, when it comes to capital market, the uh, products, services, and liquidity, we are saying, well, that's not uh, maybe where Saxo Bank uh, will be the best in all areas, all geographies, all product groups, and, and so forth. So what we're doing there is really we're, we're working with the best in the world, and that is uh, both from 
asset managers, liquidity providers, different services and so forth. So what we're trying to do is completely unbiased with an open architecture, have the best possible solutions for our clients. And also the only interest we have really is that it's high quality and that is competitive price because that's what's very, very important uh, for, for, for the clients and the partners in the end. What Saxo Bank is really all about is facilitating this. And that means we have developed uh, from the very beginning a global technology stack, which, as I mentioned, we continue uh, to work uh, heavily on. We have more than 1,200 people just in technology continuously developing this. And then we have a set of business processes. So when we talk about constant improvement in, in Saxo Bank, it's all about the uh, people, uh, processes and technology. And that's also really where we bring it all together, making sure we have the right services, the right products, the right uh, uh, liquidity pools, et cetera, et cetera. And then we package that with a, a, a global technology stack uh, and a global set of business processes, uh, which allows us via Open API, which was really the one we launched in 2016 on the Singapore FinTech Festival, that we service everything we do. Because in the end, we are selling uh, platforms and APIs, uh, whether that's to direct traders and investors or whether it's to wholesale clients, or other partners. And uh, I'm happy to say that actually since we launched uh, uh, our own API in, in Singapore back in 16, I think we now have uh, ballpark figures, probably 80, 80% of the Singapore uh, fintech robots and so forth that are actually working with Saxo because we've developed the full value chain on a global scale with a very, very broad uh, set of obviously global ETFs, mutual funds, stocks, bonds, uh, et cetera, et cetera, are basically the, 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 the full multi-asset uh, proposition. <clears throat> so uh, the distribution is all about uh, having the best and most intuitive platform uh, and then have APIs so you can work with partners so that we can be uh, kind of leg of breaks in, in the complete client experience. But what we do offer is really to have a much, much, much better client experience with lower uh, cost and complexity in, in a, in a uh, completely fully supported uh, uh, digital uh, value chain. So uh, obviously in the end, uh, client experience, I think we, we all know is, is everything. <clears throat> and from uh, uh, being challenged with obviously uh, many different business models, uh, margin pressure, uh, you, you know, uh, clients wanting more and more in terms of uh, uh, better support, uh, using AI, big data to uh, uh, <clears throat> inform people, to uh, educate them, uh, to make sure that they have the risk, uh, right risk approach and so forth. That's obviously uh, critically important uh, uh, to make this work. <clears throat> In Saxo Bank, we have uh, developed three platforms. Saxo Investor Plus, which is a very user-friendly, uh, but also still sophisticated, as Da Vinci said, you know, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So what we try to do with, with the investor platform uh, that you have a, uh, a picture of here is really to make things uh, super easy to navigate, but at the same time uh, present what actually is relatively complex information in a seamless manner so that we can be timely, relevant and engaging for all of our clients. And a big part of this, for example, is uh, that People want to fulfill their financial aspirations, so hence selecting the best products on a global level, but at the same time being able to do that at a very low and competitive price. Uh, I mean, the price alone, actually, uh, the Danish Consumer Council a few years back uh, indicated that, you know, compared to paying maybe 200 basis points uh, in, in, in fees, if you uh, save 100 basis points uh, a, a year for your pension, you can actually retire four years in advance. So, so the cost part of it is critically important, but at the same time, of course, having an open architecture where you can get the best from BlackRock, Brown Advisory, Morningstar, many, many others, is obviously a good combination. But if you cannot navigate it, and if you don't know uh, exactly where you want to put your money, where you want to invest your money, you need themes, you need inspiration. And when it comes to the whole uh, ESG agenda, I think it's pretty clear, uh, at least to us in Saxo uh, and, and to, to most of our clients, that the problems we are facing as human beings, as, as uh, the world now, will not be solved uh, unless that there are uh, well-funded companies and uh, private entrepreneurs 
that are coming up with uh, solutions. And that could be uh, windmills, it could be, uh, you know, uh, cleaner water, it could be all sorts of uh, solutions, solar cells, better batteries, electric cars, all of that. But of course, it could also be within medicine, it could be within uh, pretty much any uh, area that truly interests you, but at the same time, is needed to actually make the world a better place. So when we talk about making an impact, uh, it's, it's of course also to, to be able to do these things. But first, it starts with the experience. Make sure that you can easily navigate it. As I said, this is a, 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 a very easy to use platform for, we call the investor platform. We also have a Saxo Trader Go for, for slightly more sophisticated uh, people and Saxo Trader Pro for people who really need all the bells and whistles to navigate this. But the, the key thing is that it actually all runs on the same core infrastructure, which allows us to be uh, delivering the best possible client services but also to use big data and AI to service clients much better because client experience in the end is, is everything. So we don't necessarily only want to sell on, on price. Of course, we want to be super competitive, but we want to be better. And better also means that, that the experience is top notch and that you can actually do whatever you want to do to navigate your own financial destiny, but also to make an impact in the world. So uh, uh, when it comes to uh, financial aspirations, I think that everyone in the world uh, uh, actually are in really heavy need of having enough money to pay the bills, to take care of the kids, to have a, a nice uh, place to live, maybe even a, a vacation home, uh, go on vacations, uh, make sure that, that you can uh, aspire for, for the pension and your uh, older years in, a, in an optimal manner. And it's actually quite compelling that even though that many people out there are talking about uh, money being the root of all evil and so forth, actually uh, money is a precondition for a good life. It is almost as important, uh, I would say, as important as, as being able to breathe fresh air because with my, no money, we don't get anything to eat. We don't have a place to stay. And, and, and more importantly, we cannot uh, exchange our services for other people's services in a good uh, way. Of course, in the end, the financial system and how you can invest is also what supports you to uh, meet the financial aspirations of your life, uh, whether you're a family, whether you're a business, uh, whether you're an individual or something. Everyone has clearly uh, uh, ambitions for their financial aspirations <clears throat> and, and having proper uh, services and having uh, the, the right solutions for, for that uh, is, is really, really important so you can understand uh, the risk reward, and you can you can really try to to plan for 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 your investments the best way possible. <clears throat> uh, when it comes also to to actually making an impact, uh, I think that that uh, making an impact is not detrimental to fulfilling your financial aspirations. I think a good uh, uh, way of showing that, for example, is that there's a big uh, seismic change going on between what's called the, 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 the black energy producers with uh, you know, oil, uh, coal, <clears throat> gasoline and so forth, moving into uh, more electric, more uh, fuel cells, more uh, uh, hydrogen, uh, many, many other solutions that are uh, not polluting and that over time will be the true solution, uh, I think, for, for, for how we can all live in this world, have a great life, and at the same time, uh, have a sustainable world that we live in. So we can already see how uh, green investments have uh, uh, started a complete new trend. It's accelerating uh, quite a bit. We had uh, also a green uh, transformation basket uh, for self-directed uh, traders in, in, in Saxo in the beginning of the year, and it has been uh, performing super well. We also have uh, for people that don't want to do it themselves, uh, Brown Advisory, for example, who has a good ESG portfolio also, uh, making 22% uh, uh, net net for the year. So I think that many, many opportunities to mix uh, uh, how to meet uh, the financial aspiration, but then actually to make an impact. And uh, <clears throat> it has been shown by Scandinavian studies that uh, people who say, you know, we, they want to refrain from flying, which unfortunately we all have to do these days, but also from eating meat, uh, using their car and so forth. Actually, the impact for investing in, in green transformation is 20 times bigger. Uh, sorry, 27 times bigger. 
So that means really that if we all lived like uh, monks back in the 1500, well, actually making clever investments is 27 times more impactful. So that means, again, that's why you, you can and should make an impact uh, driving your investments according to your, your values, your virtues, how you'd like to see the, the world develop, invest in the companies that are, can hopefully be the solution for the future, but at the same time meet the financial aspirations. And that to Saxo Bank is very, very important. And we, we're trying to do that with driving continuously forward uh, a very different level of digital engagement, but really where people can, can uh, explore uh, the best way forward for them in terms of financial aspirations and making a, a proper impact on the world. <clears throat> so um, uh, when in Saxo Bank, we, we think a lot about win-win uh, uh, because if it's not win-win, I mean, we can't expect the uh, clients to come to us uh, uh, just because we would like to have more clients and uh, same thing with partners and so forth. So, so it, in the end, it's, it's all about win-win. So we all have to think about what can we do for each other? How can we help each other uh, grow the business, uh, make people fulfill their financial aspirations, but also, of course, to, to, to make uh, an impact. And uh, I think it's fair to say that the financial industry is undergoing a tremendous change right now. Obviously, the traditional banking model is not as strong and, and helpful uh, as it was. Uh, negative interest rates, of course, is turning everything around. Where before, if you had clients deposits, you'd make money on those. Uh, now you lose money unless you send on the bill to, to private investors. The need for technology, the need for, for better investment opportunities, the need to debundle and decompose investments and actually make a decision uh, as, as a person on, on how you want to invest that rather than just giving it all away. That entails uh, a lot of uh, different thinking. Saxo Bank, by the way, uh, have uh, uh, so far this year, we've onboarded uh, in total more than 200,000 new clients and uh, a, a, a combined uh, new client assets of uh, uh, north of 10 billion euros. So we, we're beginning to see something that is really changing here because it's a much more digital model across the world. And it also something that, that if you start doing these things in a good way, people actually like it and then, then things are moving quickly. So we are, knock on wood, uh, continuously trying to, to work on this and improve, but it also means that when we work with, with partners, actually rather than the, the, in the old days where everyone was sitting trying to build their own solutions and so forth, we need to partner. And I think honestly what Saxo has done is, is quite compelling in the sense that, that we do have global access, we do have uh, cloud-based uh, and microservice uh, architecture. Uh, we work with open APIs. We can really fit into the ecosystem. And partners working with us are seeing a significant additional scale opportunity, but also they significantly reduce cost and complexity operating uh, uh, a very, very complex world with a very, very uh, high demand for ongoing technological uh, development. But at the same time, as you reduce cost and complexity and you have more straight through processing and you can really focus on the client franchise, you actually get a much, much better client experience. And the uh, offerings can be customized uh, very heavily. And we've done that for, I mean, we, we worked on this for many years and, and uh, we already servicing clients with AI, big data to make things timely, relevant and engaging. And that means, you know, new ideas, risk uh, warnings, et cetera, et cetera. There are many, many things where, where really the service model is changing from in the old days, being someone on a telephone, having one-to-one, -one, and where also you can argue, was that really George Soros you had in the telephone there, or, or was it just uh, another relationship manager? Because relationship managers are very, very important, but I also think that their main claim to fame is really to give an outstanding service to clients um, that deserves it and where it can be afforded. But I think digital engagement and making sure that, that all the data that's available uh, to you can be presented and packaged in a, in a very easy and understandable manner uh, on a timely, relevant and engaging uh, basis. Because this to me is, is changing everything because it's a very complex world, but if you cannot get the right information at the right time and understand what you can uh, or, or should do about it, it's not gonna work. And then, of course, we are living in a very, very, very uh, regulated environment. Uh, I think it's fair to say that, 
regulation is, is coming and coming and coming. And we've seen that for many years. And I don't think that anyone expects that that would reverse anytime soon. Of course, you can always hope that regulators work more on a global level to align uh, interests and rules and so forth, because that would give a much better climate for, for both uh, uh, banks and brokers and other financial institutions, but also for clients. So we know certain standards are, are, are going to be adhered to and so forth. But also when you build a, a global technology stack and a global set of business processes, well, then when we talk about uh, MIFID here in Europe or GDPR, or, and I think the data protection is a global theme for sure, and, and the AML and KYC and all of that, uh, market abuse monitoring and so forth, actually you're going to get that in, in, in the full value chain as well. So ensure improving <clears throat> compliance and risk management, <clears throat> of course, is, is critically important um, to, to deliver uh, the full value chain and constantly think about how can we better help our clients and partners <clears throat> to fulfill their financial aspirations and to really make an impact because we can drive change by making sure that investments are flowing to the right things. And it's a completely, at least in uh, that way, we, we are still a, a very free world. And that also means that, of course, people should uh, be allowed and, and, and invest in, into uh, oil production if they want to, but they could invest into windmills. They could invest into any uh, sub-segment or company or whatever uh, of their wishes. And, and getting guidance, education, and information to get that with a good financial reporting on your risk, uh, how you're doing, other alternatives, and so forth, we do believe is going to be the, the, the future of finance, so to speak, and also the way where people actually really get a democratized financial system where you are allowed and you get the same tools and the same uh, bells and whistles, so to speak, as, as really, really professional people to be able to navigate a very complex uh, global market in, in, in very many different asset classes. To get that in a tailor-made, uh, seamless uh, way, so you can actually make an impact while fulfilling your financial aspirations, is really what we're trying to work on uh, every single day. So, I think that uh, uh, to Saxo Bank, uh, it's, it's amazing uh, to be here. There are so many interesting things going on. We have many good partnership discussions, and we would, of course, like to, to continue those because we do believe that it is not only technology, it's not only regulation, uh, but very much also partnerships that allows us to work well together, creating win-win to the benefits of all of us, by the way. So uh, with those words, I'm, I'm kind of finished now. I don't know if there are any questions or anything like that at all, if there is time for that. But anyway, this, this was uh, my brief for now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kim. Uh, it's been a pleasure to hear more from uh, you and, and Saxo. Thank you for joining us.